and welcome to Hello from Bhutan. I am Namgizam and I have, I think most of you, if you're watching, you've already recognized the person who I have on the podcast with me today. And if you aren't watching and you're listening, I have on the podcast back again, Pao Chuning Doji, who actually needs no introduction um, to Bhutanese, but, and also to a lot of the international audience because he's an Academy Award nominee and the recipient of the very um, highly cherished and very prestigious Druk Tuxi Medal here in Bhutan, which is the highest civilian honor. So thanks for being back on the show. I know I don't think I've had like this long an introduction for you and <laughs> all of the times I've interviewed you and I'm just like, I might forget everything that you're decorated with. I, Thank I think you so much, so... Nam Gizam. I'm really, really happy to be back and to be back with you. I think this might be the first time that I'm actually interviewing you on video from all the years that I've known you. I think so, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, always yeah. been audio, yeah. right? And I think I've known you, like I was saying, oh, Pa, when I want to do this podcast, I don't want to do this like so officially as, you know, oh my God, like, Oh, you know, who's been to the Oscars? No, no, but I want to actually take you back to like, you know, when you first, not that we started your journey, but when I first interviewed you, like, what, about 10 years ago, I think? Mm -hmm. Like, you're a photographer, traveler, mm -hmm. wanted to be an aspiring writer, and you mm -hmm. had like no idea that you were really going to become like this film director writing scripts, right? <laughs> it has been an incredible journey. I think uh, you're right. The, one of the first interviews I did was with you uh, in the Folk Heritage. And we were talking about oh, yeah. my uh, photography project along the Silk Roads. Yeah. And just as that uh, was, uh, I was starting to work on the English version, which you helped with, I got into filmmaking. Which you so. harassed me for. Yes. <laughs> no, but I, I'm hoping that uh, that book actually sees the light of day when you have time to finish <laughs> it because it's interesting. You and many others. I remember you telling me after because I was interviewing you for AFP, right? And I was like, oh, and this is uh, when you'd been nominated mm -hmm. uh, for Lunana. And then you're like, oh, I don't know how, how I'll be if I, you know, if, if you happen to win the award. It's like, what after that? Quite fearful too, right? Yeah. And then you come back and then you produce and direct another movie, mm -hmm. a Monk in the Gun, which a lot of people have said has outdone your first film, mm -hmm. right? You wanted to do that. You had that ambition. Uh, I wouldn't say I had that ambition. Uh, in, it's interesting because when I first got Oscar nominated, uh, the first person who called me was Nongsa Kensi Rumbache. Mm. And he congratulated me and I said, Rumbache, I'm so scared. And he said, why? And I said, uh, it's my first film and I'm now Oscar nominated and uh, there's the only thing left for me to do is fall down because everyone strives for an Oscar nomination their entire career mm -hmm. and for me to achieve it with my first film mm -hmm. now I have nowhere else but to fall down uh, but I mean and then when I made The Monk and the Gun it's not like I was Oscar nominated and I said I set out saying okay I'm gonna make a film that's going to take me back to the Oscars and that I'm gonna win it this time I didn't have that aspiration uh, it's interesting because I made Lunana and I already started pre-production for this film mm. and then the pre-production had to be halted because I got Oscar nominated so the whole campaign mm. took me away from this film so no I didn't make this film as you know as, a, as an a, 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 with the aspiration that it'll top Lunana it just happened to be there and of course you know Nangizam when uh, when you come after an Oscar nomination, there's incredible expectation. Mm. Now, wherever I go, not just in Bhutan, uh, even in America and uh, in Taiwan where I live, when they hear that you're making a second film, uh, everyone has so much expectation. Mm. And that expectation can be a big, big burden. Mm. And I think when I was making The Monk and the Gun, that was something that was uh, a big obstacle for me, you know, mm. uh, that it would actually uh, it, 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 it could have, you know, if I wasn't too careful, it might disrupt my creative process. Mm. Because, you know, the way I work is, you know, uh, it's, 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 I keep things very simple. I keep things very grounded. My stories are very human stories, uh, very simple. Uh, but then suddenly when you keep hearing, oh, this is the, 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 the you know, the... the <laughs> Academy Award nominee. Yeah, the, the, you know, the, it's, yeah, it's the second coming after Lunana, you mm. know, and then you, 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 you have to block it out. Mm. Because sometimes then that, that interferes with the creative process. When you talk about the creative process, um, even for your first film, your script, had a lot of revisions, right? Yeah. It had changed from its original form. Yes, yes, yes. Did that happen with The Monk and the Gun oh, as well? Oh, yes, yes. You know, um, I think 
uh, filmmaking in Bhutan right now, it's still in its infancy stages. Mm. And we are very limited, not only in terms of resources, but also uh, individuals, mm. you know, uh, crew-wise as well. I mean, when we made Hema Hema, we had a lot of foreign crew members. Mm. When we made Lunana, we still had to rely, you know, on uh, Americans coming in for sound and all that. And I can see that there's a progression that we're making. But also with uh, <clears throat> another big challenge is uh, cast. Mm. You know, yes, we do have a, a, a local film industry. Mm. But if you really look at it, uh, we don't have professionally trained actors. Mm. So uh, it's uh, very difficult because when you write scripts, when you write these characters and uh, storylines, <clears throat> at the back of my head, I'm always thinking, will I find actors who can play out these roles? Uh, I think with Lunana, I was very fortunate uh, to find someone like Pemzam, mm. who was able to, you know, really uh, bring that character to life. Originally, it was a little girl called Wangmo. Mm. And uh, I remember when I shared the script with my DOP, Chigni Tenzing, he said, forget about finding a girl like that in Lunana. You won't find a girl like that in the whole of Bhutan. <laughs> but we did find Pemzam. And, uh, you know, I'm someone when I feel like we have certain limitations in the way we work, mm. I try to use those limitations as an asset. Mm. So, okay, we don't have professionally trained actors. Then what do we do? Well, mm. let's cast according to the character. And then what I do is I spend time working with these characters and then bringing out their characteristics, their storylines, and then uh, put them into the, you know, into the final script. Mm. Um, I think a very good example uh, is the Lama in mm. The Monk and the Gun. Mm. He was casted literally five days before we started shooting. Oh, is he a real Lama? He's a real He's Lama. A real lama. <laughs> I want to talk. So when I went to Bumtang, uh, originally I had casted Lama Tsetin, who's mm. a close friend of mine who lives in uh, Tamjing in Bumtang. I had casted him as the Lama, but he, uh, you know he he was very reluctant to do it, and I think if he did it, the Lama character would be very different. Mm. Lama Tsetin is very Yoda-like. You know, very cheerful, very yeah. jovial. Pleasant looking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, when I was in Ura and I, I wanted permission to shoot where the Chorten is, mm. uh, you know, I went to seek our permission and they said the landowner is this person. And I went to his house and he turned out to be a lump. Mm. And then uh, he sat there in the corner of his room with his smoky eyes and deep voice and his beard. And mm. I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's a very powerful character. Mm. And of course, I, uh, I asked him if he would be willing to do it. And he said he was about to go to his cave to do mm. a, you know, a, a kunsam. Mm. And I convinced him to stay back. Mm. And then having him on board, then I was able to adapt the script to make the Lama character a little bit more, uh, you could say, suspenseful. Mm. Uh, Even ominous, you know? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because, like... you know, <laughs> like, like the close-up of him and his eyes are yes. very smoky. Mm. There, there's something about him. Mm. Uh, and uh, you could say that then the storyline and the script took a little bit more of the Lama figure became more mysterious, yes, more true. fearful almost. Yes. So mm. that worked for the benefit of it. Mm. Um, also another character, I think that, uh, you know, this non-professional approach to casting and writing that, that really benefited the, the, this project is Tandon Pubs. Mm. Um, uh, you know, Tandon Pubs actually came on board as my assistant, mm. director's assistant. And originally, what I wanted to do was I wanted the election officer, uh, you know, uh, to be a Hotsampa. Mm. Because I, I really wanted the film to capture every aspect of Bhutanese society. So I thought, uh, you know, let's have representations, you know. Mm. And uh, when I was uh, auditioning uh, for Yangden, I had asked uh, Pema Zhangshi to come. And she was auditioning. And I remember sitting in this audition room, it was me and Zhangshi. And then Pubs was there beside me and I said, okay, there's no one here. Well, why don't you just read out the lines for the mm. other officer? And then the two of them did that. And by the end of it, I looked at Pubs and I was like, hey, you're, you're not bad. <laughs> you know, you should, uh, you, should, you, sh you should play this role. And mm. then he was really happy to do it. Mm. And uh, I think it's amazing. He, he was great. Mm. You know, I adapted the script so it would be more him. Mm. Um, I think... Uh, he has that kind of comedic element that comes through mm. and that brings life to the character. Mm. 
uh, uh, I know that for many people he was one of their favorite characters mm. in the movie and many commented that he is the Ugin giant of this movie. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's true, I think. No, but I think all of your characters were really strong in A Monk and the Gun mm -hmm. as they were in Nunana, first-time mm -hmm. actors, and I think you managed to pick them out. I was just saying how, you know, like other directors elsewhere in the world do not have to encounter the challenge of like casting. Yes. Right? Like yes, this is yes. like such a unique challenge. Yes. But then I think you've... Uh, haven't done too badly. <laughs> well, I think uh, I, I have to give credit where it's due. Uh, a lo large part also is to Stephanie, mm. uh, you know, who, who is Your wife. my wife, <laughs> yes. my creative partner. Mm. Uh, you know, many times I think you need to have a creative partner mm. who will tell you what you need to hear and not what they think you would like to hear. Mm. Uh, so with Steph, you know, she, she's that, you mm. know, that voice for me. Uh, casting wise she always gives me you know good advice and then mm. after we have casted she uh, both for Lunana and the monk and the gun she organized a 10-day workshop mm. you know for people to get uh, to kind of like break down their uh, barriers mm. because she's an actress herself mm. so because when they come people who have not acted before and suddenly when they're on set with like big cameras in front mm. of them, you, you know, you start getting all, uh, you know, you have second thoughts. What mm. am I doing here? Mm. So Steph does a good job in preparing them mm. to come on set so I can work with them. Mm. It's been really visible, especially Choing M Studio, mm -hmm. who I've known mm -hmm. for a very long yes. time. So we filmed with him recently and this was more like he had to do like a, he had to be a cooking host, like mm -hmm. a chef in the kitchen. And I was like, my God, Choing, I've known you. I can really see that Paul's film has made a huge impact on how you, how you <laughs> present and how you act, like so confident and mm -hmm. very, very professional. I think mm -hmm. it's, um, it actually shows. Mm -hmm. um, the monk in the gun, you know, everybody's like, there's this, uh, so my cousin Maya, she was showing me this review on IMDb because, mm -hmm. by the way, we're going to talk about how you need to support this film as a Putinese. <laughs> but before that, on IMDb, there was a review saying, the film is actually about a monk in the gun. And I was thinking about all of these movies that I watch where, you know, you have this name mm -hmm. and it's metaphorical or, you know, yes. it's not very literal. And then here it's like literal, right? Yes, so how yes. did the gun happen, this juxtaposition? Um, well, during the pandemic, I was uh, stuck in Bumtang mm. and uh, because I had nothing better to do, I said, let's build Temalingpa's birth stupa. Mm. And uh, we, me, a couple of friends uh, and uh, the monks of Tamjing Monastery, we built the Chorten mm. there. And uh, while building the Chorten, we had to deal with everything. Mm. So as we laid the foundation, the lamas came on and then they laid out all these weapons. Mm. Of course, we didn't have real guns. So we had little plastic guns and <laughs> plastic swords and we <laughs> laid that down and then we buried them. And I was so intrigued by that. Mm. I thought that was so amazing. So I asked them, what's the symbolism of that? Mm. And the Lama told me exactly what I put in the script. Mm. That, uh, you know, since guns, weapons represent aggression, mm. you know, hatred, suffering, uh, they are put on the bottommost part of this chorten. Mm. The foundation is laid over it. So. Mm. When the chorten comes a lot, come, is built, the mind of the of the the, the chorten representing the enlightened mind is built over that. Mm. So wisdom and compassion and the enlightened mind crushes mm. hatred, suffering, mm. conflict. And I thought that was so beautiful, and I thought that was something that if we were able to capture it on film, it could be something that could share Bhutan with the rest of the world. Mm. And that's one of my main motivations to make films in Bhutan is to share. Bhutanese culture, Bhutanese traditions with mm. the rest of the world. And that's where your role, I was thinking when I was watching The Monk and the Gun and I watched Nunana as well, I was thinking, hmm, you know, Paul's almost like a historian, like you're archiving mm -hmm. important moments in Bhutanese mm -hmm. history and in a creative way that is palatable to a mass audience, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like a niche audience, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, so it's for various age groups and the reactions yes. also are different, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was thinking, oh, this could really I mean, I never knew about how, you know, you put guns and everything. Like, I learned that from your film, right? <laughs> and I also thought, wow, this is very powerful, right? Mm -hmm. I think even as a Putinese, like, educating people and yeah. generations like my cousin Maya, who is the assistant director for this podcast, <laughs> uh, my assistant for this podcast, like, like she, didn't, she doesn't know a lot of these things uh -huh. too, right? 
But also, I think elements in the movie. I th- I thought you had some really strong moments in your film, like that really evoked very emotional responses in mm-hmm. Indonesia in our generation mm-hmm. and older, right? Mm-hmm. Who've lived through the transitional mm-hmm. period, mm-hmm. as opposed to the younger Putinese who come after and yeah. they they enjoy that comedy, right? Yeah. But that comedy isn't just slastic comedy. Like that comedy is loaded, also, mm-hmm. you know, because there's so much more meaning yeah. uh, behind that. I think that that reaction, like I was sitting in the audience and I was like, oh my god, am I the only one feeling emotional? And I look around and there are like other people who are like wiping tears. I mean, I didn't have to wipe tears off mm-hmm. my uh, back here out of my eyes, but everybody else was mm-hmm. tearful, right? Mm-hmm. So, did you think that it would evoke this kind of a response? I mean, you did tell me like before we started filming that you it did elicit that kind of a response in some of the international yes, audience. Yes. Um, you know, first of all, g- going back uh, to archiving mm. Bhutanese stories, I think that's very important. Uh, I remember when I first decided to become a filmmaker, uh, my teacher, Zonsa Kensi uh, I remember two of us were sitting uh, outside his house in Paro, and you know, it was, it was a very intimate, personal moment, just him and me, and he told me, he was like, Paul, uh, filmmakers have a very important responsibility. And he said, we are the scribes of our time. Mm. It is through our stories, through our films, we capture what it means to be Bhutanese. It, uh, our hopes, our dreams, our values have to be captured in the stories we tell mm. so that future generations of Bhutanese can be like, oh, this is how our time was. Mm. So I, I take that responsibility very seriously. Um, I've tried to do that with Lunana Yak in the classroom. Mm. I, I tried to capture, uh, you know, uh, an individual who represents the Bhutanese youth and his wish to find where he belongs. Mm. Uh, at that time, in 2018, people that wish to go to Australia was there. and That's mm. why the character wants to go to Australia. Mm. And now I feel it's become a lot more, you know. And now coming to the response from the audience, you know, to be really frank, uh, when I made Lunana, I, uh, w- w- when I... Uh, f- finished writing the script, right at that moment, I knew what I was giving the audience and mm. what I would get back. Mm. I was very confident. Uh, I knew that, yes, it was a simple story, but I knew a lot of people would find it emotional. You mm. know, there might be a few tears here and there. I, I expected that. Mm. So even when the film premiered in London, uh, I remember standing behind the cinema hall watching and I was thinking, mm, yeah, you know, it, it's okay. You know, <laughs> uh, With The Monk and the Gun, um, because, you know, I, I never went to film school. Mm. So my films are how I'm trying to become a better filmmaker. Mm. One of the main motivations for The Monk and the Gun was how can I build on what I did with Lunana? Mm. Mm. Okay, everyone said Lunana is too simple. I was like, okay, fine. Mm. Let's try something else. Mm. Lunana has only one character. Okay, mm. let's make, uh, you know, a, a whole, multiple like, multiple. There's mm. about nine characters, each mm. with their own lives each you know, intersecting mm. um, and then I was trying for it to be a drama, I was trying for it to be a little bit, uh, you could say thriller type, a uh, little comedy type. So at the end, when the film actually premiered at Telluride Film Festival, mm. I was so, you know, I don't get nervous usually, mm. but I was so nervous because I was wondering, have I, have I tried to do too much here, you know? Mm. What if I tried too much and it all falls apart mm. so it was funny because we had our world premiere uh, at the Ellis Park theater and it was out in an outdoor park mm. 550 people and every time certain scenes came up I, I would like quickly walk away like go to a nearby tree and kind of distract myself and <laughs> see and come back so I, I, I don't know I didn't know what the audience response mm. would be but as you said, it's interesting because there's so many things going on. There's so many different elements that, uh, that, that you know, some people are laughing, some people are crying, mm. w- which uh, I, I find very sweet. Mm. Um, you know, even uh, U.S. audiences, mm. you know, certain scenes, they got very emotional. Mm. In Bhutan, uh, people are finding scenes when, when we look back at how Bhutan transitioned, mm. how His Majesty the Fourth King gave us democracy, gifted mm. us democracy, uh, all that. Mm. People do get emotional to it. But I think that's the beauty of art because uh, this film has so many different layers, so many different storylines that each audience in different regions of the world are finding certain things that they connect with. Mm. For example, when we screen the film here in Bhutan, and I was watching yesterday in the audience, I can tell that most of the regular Bhutanese audience, they have no idea what the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution mm. is. 
And uh, the reason I put it the way it is, is because I was thinking, how would you interpret what the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution is to a monk? <laughs> Conjure. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I put it. Yeah. But then I know that for the Bhutanese audience, they'll be like, hmm. Mm. You know? But for the US audience, they, that's one of their favorite scenes because mm. they relate to that. Right, right. And as I said, that's the beauty of art. Mm. We can take something, package it in a way that it becomes relatable for every audience. Mm. The universal emotions yes. and feelings, I yes, think. Yes. I think you've, uh, you've done a, a great job with that. I should have mentioned this at the start. I forgot. Like The Monk in the Gun is Bhutan's official submission mm. to the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why we're talking about The Monk in the Gun. Um, <laughs> Are you saying you went back yesterday, which is like a day after the premiere, right? Mm -hmm. So what kind of audience was that? Did you see? Like, oh, it the... was very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, uh, even with Lunana, you know, when Lunana uh, screened in Bhutan, mm -hmm. many people came up to me and said, this is the very first time they're going to a cinema to watch a film. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, I'm, I'm very encouraged to know that, uh, you know, my films are bringing people, you know, into the Bhutanese cinemas mm. usually, which they wouldn't. It's a very different audience. It's a, it's a, it's a very different it. audience. Uh, mm. Yesterday I went, there were lums, there oh. were tukus, yeah, there were some tukus <laughs> that I recognized and we, we spoke mm. as well. Mm. Uh, there were tourists. Mm. Interestingly, yesterday I got calls from travel agencies and uh, even Jiwaling Hotel. Oh. And they wanted to know if uh, our film had English subtitles. Mm. So I'm very happy to know that, uh, you know, Bhutanese cinema can also be a platform that can give back to the tourists, you mm. know, that, that tourists have another option. Right. Uh, I also saw uh, school children. Mm. Uh, interestingly, I saw some government officials all the way from Paro, mm. and they told me that, oh, we bunked office to come and watch the <laughs> film. You're uh, going to put them in trouble. <laughs> so no names. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, I, I mean, I tried to get an evening slot, but mm. the, the cinema was so full that I couldn't right. find. This is the only time I could find. But yeah, it's bringing in a wide range of audiences. Mm. And uh, I think uh, that's, that, that's a celebration of mm. uh, cinema. Mm. The Monk and the Gun is actually showing at Luger Theatre mm. uh, till the end of the month, 4 p.m., right? 4 the screening is at 4 p.m., which I think for parents like me is such a great time to go and watch a movie, otherwise it's too <laughs> late. So, I mean, it's, it, what do they call it? Do they call it like a matinee? Is it a matinee I, show? I think yeah. so, yeah. yeah. So go get the tickets. You're not going to um, regret buying the tickets and watching this movie because later, I mean, when you see it at... Uh, we're hoping that it gets nominated <laughs> again. If you see that, you'll be like, oh my God, I missed the chance to see it. And you don't want to watch pirated versions of it. <laughs> like yes, you watch yes. Lunana Yak in the Classroom, which is ethically wrong. So please don't do that. But I just want to congratulate you, Pao. I think having seen you grow as a friend and as a professional, like from all of these years mm -hmm. that I've known you, um, I think I'm actually quite very, pr I'm very proud of you, you know, and Thank I don't you. think you'd expect me to say this on record because <laughs> I'm always very angry with you, <laughs> but I really am very proud of how far you've come and I thought, wow, I didn't think this guy uh, would be able to tell, I mean, your photographs are beautiful, right? Mm. And the things you would write, and especially when you talk about Shrenza, mm. I, I know that you have that lyricism in you, that mm. romanticism in mm. you, but to see this translate so beautifully mm. onto screen, I think it's quite remarkable. It's a remarkable achievement, and um, I'm sure you must be proud of yourself, even though you have these moments of doubt, <laughs> right? Like, oh, wow, I can't believe I managed to pull this off, right? Um, I'm hoping that um, uh, many more international film festivals to go to, I'm sure the yeah, films yeah. many more film festivals. Uh, I mean, the Monk and the Gun, uh, I'm happy to say that uh, if you compare with Lunana, uh, it has been received much better by, mm. by not only just the film critics, but the film festivals, mm. film distributors. So it's, it's been a very, very busy mm. uh, month. Mm. Uh, so, you know, uh, we have had uh, film festivals in the US, in Canada, uh, in Europe, uh, in Asia. Mm -hmm. And uh, now uh, the film, the next stop for the film is Rome, Rome mm -hmm. Film Festival, mm -hmm. where it's in competition. Then it goes to Bombay, where, mm -hmm. you know, they started a new competition for the South Asian films. Mm -hmm. So every year they select different South Asian, the best South Asian films mm -hmm. to compete. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud to say that this year we are representing Bhutan there. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the film uh, travels to the US mm -hmm. uh, to make stops as the campaign builds up. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, for the announcement of the Oscar shortlist, which is in December. Mm. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's it's very busy, um, but as you were saying, you know, um, it's it's been an amazing journey, mm. and uh, I think uh, you know you as as a as a dear friend, you have you have witnessed this. Uh, but for me, you know, um, 
it's it's you know I always tell people I never wanted to become a filmmaker. Mm. I never thought I would become a filmmaker. Forget about that, an Oscar-nominated filmmaker. Uh, but for me, I always tell people it's because of the love of storytelling. Mm. Uh, you know me. I was always in love with storytelling, mm. and, uh, and and you know I always tell people that in in Bhutanese culture. We don't even have a word for storytelling. Mm. We were just discussing this yeah. earlier. I was like, what do you mean you don't have a word yeah, for storytelling? Because, you know, I'm, I'm Kurtip, I'm Bumtap, mm. I'm a little Shachop as well. But in all of our dialects, you know, Tamthur Shikcho, Rumma Shige, it's always about untying a knot. Mm. Uh, and even in Zongha, Sun Chitan, the verb to tan is to release, no? Mm. So I think uh, that shows how important storytelling is mm. in Bhutanese culture. Mm. I myself, I remember growing up in my grandfather's house, you know, uh, at that time we didn't even have gas stoves. Mm. So we would have these big wooden logs in the stove. In the tub. In the tub. <laughs> and, you know, I would, every day, you know, I was so keen to grow up. Mm. Every day I would go measure my height on the mud wall, <laughs> you know, hoping that I'd grow even an inch taller. And then, uh, you know, just stories being told uh, over that, you mm. know, and that's the, how I grew up. Mm. And for me, uh, storytelling was always such an important part of my life. And that's what drew me into photography. Mm. When we first met, that's what I was doing. Mm. I, I was journeying across the Silk Roads into Afghanistan, Pakistan, mm. because I wanted to tell stories through Mm. images, mm. pictures, mm. Uh, and of course, uh, when, when you have that passion, when you have that, you know, that love for mm. something like that, you just want to evolve, right? Mm. And then you could say somehow writing got involved, and then eventually uh, I came to realize that one of the most powerful tools of telling stories is moving pictures. Mm. And that's, I think, you could say filmmaking is kind of like and the evolution of my love of photography and writing mm. coming together, you know, mm. so yeah. Mm. I also remember, I think in the first interview, I, I suddenly remembered that you said this where, you know, it's all about causes and conditions, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you were saying, you never, it was never intentional for you to become a filmmaker, but yeah. like the right causes and conditions existed yeah, yeah. for you to be at the right place at the right time yeah. doing the right thing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I want to talk about the campaign, okay? Mm -hmm. So we had this conversation when Lunana was in the running to win an Oscar, uh, but it never really got published anywhere. So I want to give Pao a chance to talk about what this campaign is and why is Pao at the premiere giving us this little, you know, post of <laughs> a monkey at the gun and I am to uh, DB print us and say, please support the film. Like, yes, well, you know, explain. Um... Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the Oscar campaign is very, uh, you know, uh, it's very, very competitive. Mm. I mean, it's not unfortunate, but it has to be competitive. Mm. But then the thing is, uh, if you look at the history, you know, mm. of the Academy, usually uh, films that tend to do well are usually from wealthier countries. You know, that's why it's always Scandinavia, France, mm. Italy. Mm. Uh, and from Asia, if you look, at the history, it's always Japan or Korea. Mm. And that's because, uh, you know, uh, uh, funds are needed. Mm. Um, when we were first uh, shortlisted, when Lunana was first shortlisted, the first question they asked was, oh, how much is the Bhutan government funding mm. this campaign? Mm. And I said, none. Uh, and mm. I said, this is the reason why poorer countries don't do mm. well, mm. Uh, because it's very competitive. Mm. And not only that, you're up against big, big, production companies, big, big distributors. Mm, big PR companies. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I think uh, with Lunana Ayak in the classroom, we were very, very fortunate because uh, the cause and conditions all aligned for us to get nominated, which mm. was very historic, which was mm. an amazing journey. And, uh, you know, along the way, um, I met amazing individuals mm. who have again come together for the campaign of The Monk and the Gun. And I feel I'm much more experienced, mm. much more better equipped mm. to uh, uh, deal with something like that now. Mm. Uh, but going forward still, you know, uh, we are up against some of the best films in the world, mm. you know, uh, and some of the most well-funded Oscar <laughs> campaigns, you could say. Uh, I can already hear you being very careful about how you feel about Monk and the Gun's journey. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> that trepidation. <laughs> But you know, I mean, uh, and that's why I, w I was telling uh, I was telling the audience in the premiere. Mm. I said uh, a way we can support the film 
since we are a poor country, mm. is to try and uh, create a buzz for it. Right. You know? And one way is to go on IMDb and give yes. us a rating, right. uh, so that you know we can the film can be trending. Mm. You know, people can hear about it, people can see about it, mm. and yeah, interviews like this, your podcast, these. It all helps mm. because also the, you know Namgizam, what you have to understand is uh, I find it so weird when you full name me, but I can okay. never get used to it. But Namgizam, Namgizam, like Namgizam <laughs> more. Yeah. yeah. Also, I think um, poorer countries, uh, even though the film might be doing well, uh, there might not be uh, interest. Also, even from the press, you know, right? Press does a lot as well, mm. uh, and. Uh, um, you know, in, in Bhutan, unfortunately, uh, films don't really get the press I would say it deserves mm. because actually um, the success of a film from Bhutan on mm. the international level does so much for the country mm. as it showed with Lunana. And I think a one way Bhutan can help if we can't fund the campaign is, you know, Giving, provide visibility. Provide visibility, <laughs> right. and uh, uh, we don't have that much. Mm. You know, there's only a handful. You know, uh, two actually, <laughs> two journalists in Bhutan who are interested in uh, the monk and the gun and its mm. journey. So yeah, uh, anything helps. Mm. Okay, I will keep that in mind. I think the younger <laughs> lot too. I mean, if you can get that across on various platforms, support is really, really important. The competition is really intense and fierce uh, once you uh, reach that platform. And I do want to share, I think this is, uh, I do know that it is a fact. It literally is a love letter to Pumtang, the monk and the gun, right? <laughs> and Pema Lingpa, even though it is not mentioned, this has been like, I think your whole life's goal, right? To yeah. be able to, maybe a little bit on that before we wrap up. I'm a Bumta. Mm. Uh, so Bumtang is home to me and uh, uh, of course Bumtang is the land of Pema Lingpa, mm. which uh, I feel is a cultural, spiritual icon of Bhutan a that we, we don't mm. give so much importance to mm. uh, and Pema, Bumtang is synonymous with uh, Pema Lingpa mm. uh, and uh, for me um, what I've realized is when I make a film uh, somewhere um, this I give so much of myself to that project and to that location. Yeah. For example, when I made Lunana, you know, I think I left a large part of my heart in Lunana, yeah. and I'm still very associated with that place. You know, yeah. uh, I worked really hard in trying to get Pemzam out yeah. of Lunana, and now I'm happy to say that she is studying in the Royal Academy through her own merit. Yeah. I'm also, you know, uh, involved with the locals up there to try and bring them uh, solar batteries. Mm. Uh, so it's like a, in, uh, it's like an, it's like a personal connection that we built. Mm. And with Bumtang, yes, I had, I, I had that already with Pemalingpa. Mm. But I wanted to make this film so that I can give even more to this beautiful part of Bhutan. Mm. When we did make the monk and the gun in Ura. It was a, such a special bond that we made with the village. Mm. Uh, you know, the whole village was invested in the film. Mm. You know, every home in the village had become a homestay. Mm. Uh, and uh, when we left, it was amazing because all the village mothers came out crying. Uh, and uh, I'm happy that through the monk and the gun, the world can see Bumtang. Mm. And I hope that that visual connection might uh, plant the seed uh, of Pema Lingpa mm. uh, and you know that they have that cause and condition then which may bloom in another lifetime. Thank you so much Pao and I think I speak for a lot of these people when I say thanks for daring to dream and inspiring Putinese to dream and I think inspiring the next generation of filmmakers, writers. It's been really wonderful talking about filmmaking with you, but also I think all of your endeavors is always about giving back, right? I think both of the films, mm. um, Tashi Dele, I Thank think it's so wonderful. Much. All of the merit Thank you so much. <laughs> that you're gaining from this exercise. I um, can't wait to see what you're doing next. Thank you so much to everybody who watched this and thank you to everybody who's listening to Hello from Putan. Thank you. Thank you for having me.